This is the story of more than just a house. This is the story of the people who have lived in a house, a story of how they have shaped and envisioned a city, Madison, Wisconsin. I assert without fear of successful contradiction that for a city of 17,000 people, Madison is one of the most orderly cities upon the face of the earth that it is as well governed and better executed than most of them, and that there is less vice and crime and immorality prevalent here than in any other city that exists as an organization. Elijah Kyes, Madison's earliest Republican mayor, was first elected in 1865. He ran the dealings of the Wisconsin Republican Party for many years from his study in the city's prestigious Mansion Hill District. Kyes was active and shaping Madison in its early years. As mayor, he pioneered the paving of Madison streets. He also served as Madison Postmaster General, a UW Regent, State Assemblyman, and local judge. Groves Cooperative for Women is entering its second successful year. Doubt was raised at first as to whether such a cooperative would be workable, for it was a cooperative which promised no distinctions of race, color, or creed. Women's organizations of this type in the past had failed on the University of Wisconsin campus. Now, 23 girls of varied races, colors, and creeds live together successfully and harmoniously. Groves Co-op, founded in 1943, was one of the first and only interracial housing options for women at the University of Wisconsin well into the mid-20th century. Until the 1960s, all women were required to live and supervise housing. Groves Co-op was also home to the co-ed Green Lantern Eating Co-op. During the time I was at, involved in the Groves or at um, uh, uh, in the co-op was a way of both social growth and political growth. And I think that, the, of course, the importance of the co-op was that it was a cultural opposite from what was then really the dominant culture of the University of Wisconsin, which was Langdon Street and the fraternities and sororities. Groves and Green Lantern co-ops symbolized new ideas. The co-ops were a place where, according to M. Spack, just having lunch was radical. They provided space to discuss and take action on issues ranging from segregation and race to women's rights and later the anti-war movement. In 1963, Groves Women's Co-op purchased 102 East Gorham Street from the Attic Angel Association who had opened their first nursing home in Madison at the site in 1953. The association now runs a retirement community in Middleton. Okay. This room right at the top of the stairs is my room. That's Mary Reichdahl, a Groves Co-op resident from 1971 to 1972. Her son currently lives in the co-op that occupies the building. Before the co-op became co-ed, women felt safer living in a woman-only house. We felt safer, um, women in one house. And the other thing to remember was um, the women's movement was just taking off in the early 70s. So we were feeling pretty good about being autonomous. We didn't want men running the ship. The climate in Madison in the early 1970s was very different from today. The Vietnam War was still going on. Um, there were still demonstrations, um, both nonviolent and, and there were occasional violent incidents. Um, we were tear gassed several times. Um, just coming out of class sometimes you'd get tear gassed. If there was a demonstration on the hill, um, Bascom Hill, you'd come out and get, um, you know, face full of mates. Um, We, and I think we felt like we were on the cutting edge. One of the nice things about this campus is that I felt that it was very cosmopolitan. Um, and you get um, voices from all over the world. It's probably um, The other thing to know is that Sterling Hall was bombed 
uh, while we were here. Um, and, and that sort of broke up uh, the anti-war movement. People, um, the powers that be, I think, in the movement felt very strongly about keeping it nonviolent. And um, four Maverick uh, students bombed Sterling Hall and killed a researcher. And I think that really kind of broke things up. In 1972, the city of Madison designated 102 East Gorham an historical landmark. During the same period, a local developer proposed constructing a three-story apartment building just 11 feet from the front of the house. The women of Groves Co-op and other neighborhood residents lobbied the city to preserve the lot as a period garden park. In 1987, residents of the co-op worked on a collaborative mural project at the Mifflin Street Grocery Cooperative. The mural, like 102 East Gorham Street, continues to tell a story of triumph and challenges that is greater than the sum of its parts. Co-op members captured this in house journals over the years. People from the Mifflin Mural are coming this Thursday. a blank Thursday. book to be filled by words, pictures, whatever Names we for need the to house. express. Big Bug Hill Co-op. Mulberry Co-op. Kai's House. I like Mulberry, Mulberry House. Mulberries have something for everyone, almost. For a carpenter, it has life. For a cynic, it's not too sure serious, which is something we should keep in mind about naming this place. Today, I exercise democracy. I went to Chicago and handed out literature on <laughs> International Human Rights Day. Uh, I'm planning to have some dyke friends over for a movie and treats on Saturday. We'll need the living room. Anyone interested I can in participating? Express in the celebration? how ecstatic I would be if we at Hypatia when the have decided bucket that only three criteria are used in membershiping: community, nonviolence, and ability beans, to pay. Beans, beans. A big fill Sorry, of we don't beans. have any fruit. I ordered two cases of mangoes. Members of the co-op at 102 East Gorham Street lead the way towards Madison's sustainable future. I'm Burke O'Neill with Light Energy Systems, and uh, this is uh, Hypatia Co-op's uh, solar electric system. We also have solar water heating. It's a 2.2 kilowatt uh, photovoltaic system. It's the modules are actually made of uh, recycled uh, Pentium wafers and uh, this system offsets currently about 25% of Hypatia Co-op's electric use, um, which is pretty impressive since there's 14 people in the house. 102 East Gorham Street is just an address, just a house. What is important is how the hundreds of people who have resided here have helped to envision and shape this city and how future generations of residents will continue to do so into Madison's next 150 years.